Richard Krause. How did you make it fun when you were doing the Batman series? I was just reading it. I didn't realize the numbers were this high. You did 120 episodes Correct. in three years. So you just didn't ever stop working. Well, you know your stuff. We never stopped. It was, and I know a lot of TV series people complain about hours and pressure, but we had them. We, we worked 15, 16 hours a day. And, uh, you know, we were on twice a week. Yeah. So you really had to run. And then there, you know, the restrictions of costume and so on. And it wasn't easy. But I had to find ways to make it fun and funny. Because if you're playing a character that, uh, with whom you're trying to bring the laughs to the adults and yet make it believable for kids, it's kind of a tight wire. Well, it is, and I think that was, for me, the beauty of looking back at the show many years later, uh -huh. is remembering when I used to watch it as a kid, what I would take away from it, and then as an adult, 20 years later, watching these shows again and thinking, wow, that is a much different show than I ever thought well, it was. Yes, and thank you, and that's what we intended to do. Right. And the reason I signed on, because we could do wonderful things for the kids, as they were growing up and bring them these homilies and ethical things or differences between right and wrong mm -hmm. and at the same time exaggerate, be absurd and, and clownish or whatever and uh, satirize things and make it fun for the adults. But you never let the dignity of the character go, though. Can't and, do that. And that was the difference. Yeah, so what, why is it so important to maintain that? Because as an outsider, as someone who's not an actor, I would think, well, if you act like a buffoon, you'll get a couple of more laughs. Well, yes. But you see, when I act like a buffoon, or seemingly do, and I guess it's my own trick or talent or outlook about it, oh, how can I say this? That, that is the tight wire. Right. For, for example... You remember Cary Grant in all those wonderful movies? Mm -hmm. Cary Grant could do a pratfall or do something really stupid or funny or fall over a croquet mallet and slide down a, a hill into a pond and, and still look like he was trying to preserve his dignity. Right. And to me, that's the key. You must always... <laughs> look like you're trying to be dignified <laughs> or preserve your dignity regardless of the situation. <laughs> so I, I guess that if you look back on it, do you think that's the sort of main thing that you brought to the character? Or mm -hmm. what would you say is the main thing? Well, my legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I don't know. I just can't look at it that seriously right. except putting it together. And um, I guess I love to play the absurd. For example, Family Guy. Yeah. Really theater of the absurd. Is there any time, the, the Family Guy shows, I love them. It, but sometimes, even as a viewer, I think to myself, I cannot believe I just heard that on television. I feel the same way. <laughs> as a viewer, I'm shocked. And yet I do it, yeah. but I don't do all of that stuff. I just do the crazy mayor we <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a show i mean i, I you know and, and i love uh, again uh, that show is something that i think again that that people who are a little younger because i don't think really young kids are watching it but uh but you know people who are little, maybe teenagers are going to get something different from it again later if they watch it when it's in reruns and it will still be in reruns in 20 years from now yes. much like the original batman shows you know, when people come to see me at these comic cons, mm -hmm. and I do maybe seven, eight a year, I just finished uh, in Chicago, and I get an enormous audience, and they all come up and they love Batman, they love Family Guy, yeah. and curiously enough, the Fairly Odd Parents, and now I have a new uh, animated show for Disney. Uh, oh, 
and I'm, I'm just a lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you know, when, when Family Guy uh, sort of came back into your life, I guess when you started in, in 2000 uh, with it, did you think that you would ever be part of a show that is that huge again? Because the Batman thing was such a, I, I can only describe it probably as a juggernaut. I mean, it must have come out of nowhere, well, become so huge. Uh, did you think that you would be a part of something like that again? Because most actors get one shot at something like that, I think. Right. Uh, no, I never did. I, I sensed something, though, yeah. that people were responding right. in the right way. And in a way that uh, really pleased me. Right. And I, but I never thought about you know how big it would get or how long it would last. I didn't have time. <laughs> I just did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to go back to Batman, because uh, you're coming to Toronto. I'm calling from Toronto, so you're coming here to screen the movie. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it's kind of, I mean, which is very exciting for everyone. Let's talk about the, the movie a little bit, because um, the, the film was made uh, while the television show was still on the air. Right. So when did you find time to make a motion picture? Because uh, presumably you were still doing the television show as well at the same time, no? Yeah, but we didn't find time. <laughs> we, we were just forced to do it. It was like another universe. It, yeah. um we had 30 days to make that. Wow. And, uh, again, it was just running. But I wanted to do it because they gave me a chance to play Bruce Wayne more right. and get out of the, the costume. Right. So it was easier for me, and I could play the other character as well. Well, I'm told that the suit was really uncomfortable. It was. Yeah? In, um, in, in what way? Well, it was a time when they didn't have the materials that they have today. Right. And it, it was just plain hot and itchy. That's all. <laughs> and you would have spent a lot of 15 hours a day in the thing. And I kept fainting. It was embarrassing. Right. Now, Oswald, I have to ask you, what, because for me, as a, as a kid watching the show, mm -hmm. uh, it was all about the Batmobile. I loved the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. And yes. you got to drive what was the coolest car on the planet. It to, looked great on film. It, yeah, it looked great on film. I guess by the tone, though, I can maybe sense that it wasn't that easy to drive or it wasn't that great in person. Well, uh, when I was very young, I was a truck driver. Right. And I started when I was about 12 in the fields. And then later on in life, I became a, a race car driver. Right. And then I, and getting behind the wheel of the Batmobile was like driving a broken down old 37 Ford <laughs> wheat truck. <laughs> I got to be honest, but you know what? I didn't mind because it was so tricky and fun and funny and perfect on film. Right. And the kids loved it. Yeah, I know it really was. I mean, that that show. I remember seeing the car for the first time, and, and of course, I'd never seen anything like it before. It's the most famous car in the world, yeah. and everybody today that I meet still prefers that car to any other. Right. Richard Krause.